Ever wonder how our actions are influenced by the consequences they produce? Well, let's delve into the fascinating world of psychology and the birth of a theory known as operant conditioning. In the mid-20th century, a man named B.F. Skinner, a psychologist and behaviorist, initiated this groundbreaking concept. He was intrigued by the patterns of learning and sought to understand how behavior could be shaped by its consequences. To investigate, Skinner devised a method known as the Skinner Box. This box, a simple enclosed environment, became a stage for studying animal behavior. Primarily using rats and pigeons, Skinner began to observe patterns in their behavior. The animals were encouraged to perform certain actions such as pressing a lever, which would result in either positive reinforcement like food or negative reinforcement such as a mild electric shock. These experiments laid the foundation for Skinner's theory of operant conditioning. So the Skinner box has been the starting point of operant conditioning but what exactly does it entail? Let's find out. Imagine this, a rat, a lever, and a food pellet. What could possibly connect them all? This intriguing setup is where we dive into the nitty-gritty of operant conditioning. Operant conditioning, a concept pioneered by B.F. Skinner, is all about the interaction between behavior and its consequences. Skinner devised a clever apparatus popularly known as the Skinner Box to demonstrate this concept. This box was a simple, controlled environment containing a lever and a food dispenser. An animal, like a rat, placed inside the box would eventually press the lever. Upon doing so, it would receive a food pellet, a positive reinforcement. This reward encouraged the rat to repeat the action, thereby learning a new behavior. On the other hand, if a negative consequence or a punishment followed the rat's action, it would discourage that behavior. The crux of operant conditioning, then, is learning through the consequences of our actions. It's a powerful tool in shaping behavior. Thus, operant conditioning is all about learning through the consequences of our actions. So, does operant conditioning only apply to animals in a lab? Not at all. It has a far-reaching impact and is applied in various aspects of our daily lives. For instance, consider parenting techniques. Parents often use rewards or punishments to shape their children's behavior, a direct application of operant conditioning principles or take the workplace. Employers might use incentives like bonuses to encourage productivity or sanctions to deter tardiness. Even our personal habits and routines are not exempt. Ever noticed how you're more likely to hit the gym if you treat yourself to a smoothie afterward? That's operant conditioning at play. By understanding this concept, we can be more intentional about shaping our own behaviors and influencing those of others. It's about recognizing the consequences that follow our actions and using that knowledge to our advantage. In the end, operant conditioning is not just a psychological theory, it's a powerful tool that shapes our actions and our lives.